I feel that this this week we had a very, 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 very tiny snake in the house. Somebody says tiny. And Pastor Agnes, with all the other people, they you know disappear, close themselves somewhere. I mean, the thing was so tiny. I mean, smaller than a pencil. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. And Pastor Agnes was just saying, you know, you're the head of the house. And I was, and I was saying, say more, say more. I've never heard her say that. <laughs> you're the priest of the house. I'm like, yeah, come on. Bring it on. And I just call that little thing with a tissue paper. Wow. And I put it in the dustbin and then they couldn't enter the kitchen because there was something something in the dustbin. <laughs> wow. Praise the Lord. God will give you opportunity for people to honor you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, uh, we might be having some debates who is the head of the house. Thank God. Thank God. God has a way of rewarding us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I want to talk to you about transformation. Transformation and not confirmation. Transformation and not confirmation. It's good to see all of you in the house. Just send on into the most excellent, successful lead church. Lead. Tell the neighbor we are lead. Yes. Praise the Lord. I want to talk about, as you end the year, how you need to unclutter your mind. And, and, and most people, when the mind is mentioned in church, people think that preacher is not spiritual. They think, like, you know, this is just a motivational speaker. But let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. The word of the Lord in, in Romans 8 verse 2, it says that transformation can only come by the renewing of the mind, not the heart. Amen. Amen. I was in Koza, I was there last year, in you know, Koza, Commonwealth, of Zion Assembly, and when I was living, the greatest church I've ever been to, most beautiful church, man, we chartered private jets, limousine buses, I can't tell you, or something else. When I was living, the man of God blessed me with a Galaxy S7 phone to say happy for you. <laughs> Through this year, it's been full, and you know, I take two photos, it says, okay, memory. You know what I mean? It says it's memory. So sometimes I can't even take a video. Even if I see something good, I, an opportunity, can't take a video because you start and then it hurts. So last night, you know, in the evening I just decided to treat. And I realized there are so many photos in my phone that's like a, a duplicate. Like I take a photo, but there are five photos or four photos. So I went into the phone and deleted about 600 photos. Wow. And I was able to save about 6 gig. 6 GBs of memory. Ask your neighbor, what do you need to delete? <laughs> Before we go to 2018. Ask your neighbor, what, what do you need to delete? Your CPU is hanging. What are you overloaded with? What do you need to over, you know, lay aside? So the word says, be not conformed to the world, Romans 8, 2, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
So is there even proof that which is good, what is good? Romans 12. Oh, I mixed it. I wrote, I wrote it wrong. Thank you, thank you, thank you, scholars. Yeah, Romans 12. I wrote it wrong. Yeah, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The word transform there is the word metamorpho. 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 F O W. That's a Greek word which means to change to another form, to transfigure. And we are having a problem in the body of Christ because people are coming to church but they look like they have just been renovated. Panobite. Hello. So much of the world in them when they come to church. But the Bible says we are transformed. Do not be conformed. And the message is it's transformation, not conformation. Amen. And boy, that, that needs to be a book. The six points of excellent giving. <coughs> that could be your best, first book. Man, you're a giver. You have an anointing in that area. So we call it out. Amen. It's not a suggestion. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's an instruction. So a book has just been created there. Your first book. And I, it's only your father who calls things out. Yeah. 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 The first book I tried to write was called Make a Demand. I wrote the book, gave it to the publishers. They died a natural death. Until I met Dr. Marduk. When I met him, he pulled books out of me. Yeah. Right now I'm doing uh, about three much, I think, who launch three or four books. It's a book I'm doing called Friend, Friend Factor. You need to hear my teaching on how you need friends in 2018. Amen. Because you need to come to the Kesha tonight. Well, what are you going to be doing? Where are you going to be? Ask me where are you going to be? Where are you going to be? Where else? I cannot close the year in the blankets telling the your neighbor that the devil is alive. <laughs> how do you start? I mean, the, you know there's something called the law of first mention? Yeah. yeah, what you begin with is what will follow. So if you close the year in the blankets, could that be a prophecy that this is the year of sleeping? <laughs> oh, can I have a witness, somebody? Tell me about the law of first mention. <laughs> be in the sanctuary, be in the house of God, make plans and in the presence. So I'm doing a book called Fred Factor. Is another book actually, that book has to be out called, um, already now the transcribers is called Straight Talk About Sex. It's not a good book. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so the word of the Lord says we are supposed to be metamorpho, metamorpho. From one form to another. Amen. That's what the gospel does. When you come to the kingdom, you don't improve. No, it's not an improvement. It's a total, you know, the picture about metamorpho, it's, we studied it in biology, and biology teachers, they can tell us that the word metamorphosis is when a caterpillar is turning into a butterfly. That's metamorphosis. And when that caterpillar breaks the cocoon and gets out of that cocoon and turns into a butterfly, now if you take if you take a caterpillar in a cocoon and you look or if, if you take a caterpillar and you take a butterfly, there is no trace. There is no trace of a caterpillar in a butterfly. There's no similarity. So when you came to Christ, you need to hear, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. 
When you came to Christ, you totally became another person that never existed before. Oh, come on, somebody. Tell somebody next to you, I'm a new, I'm new species. I'm new species. I never existed before. Can I have a name and somebody? So whatever you did before you came to the kingdom, it's not you. That guy, that chick died. And he's serving. Hallelujah. But the problem we are having in the house of God is we're having some Christians who are not met, met, meta, metamorphosized. So, so you look at them, you see they're not butterfly, but they're butterpillar. <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about this morning? Because there's a trace of where they are coming from. Some similarity, some traits, some, 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 some things in them didn't die. Look at somebody asked them, did you, did you die? Did you die? Tell somebody, you need to die. You need to die. You need to die and resurrect, be alive in Christ. Amen. Some guys didn't die, they just fainted. <laughs> Praise God. There's no trace. And salvation is such a big miracle. The once it happens in you, the change comes from inside to the outside. There are things you don't need to be told not to do. You just know, I cannot go where I used to go. Hallelujah. You can't hang out where you used to hang out. There's change. I know I've told you this, but... Yes, I was so, I just I saw a picture. I think Elder Kev was trying to pull it for you guys on the screen. But I saw a picture of 10th September 1974. Uh, when I was, I was taking a photo in a studio in 10th September 1974. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you thought we were <laughs> Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, very smart. I can show you if you want. Praise the Lord. <laughs> 10 September. And I was saying this is a Beneza. God has brought me this far. Amen. But anyway, I wanted to say that in our farm, we used to have, we had employed some Somalis. And these Somalis planted in our farm some cut knows what's cut. Mm. Mirai. So we had a lot of mirai in the farm. So when I was growing up, I used to work on them and fertilize them. And as a teenager, I used to sell. <laughs> so the man standing in front of you used to sell mirai. I used to make some good money. Now I remember when I gave my life to Jesus in 1986, October 20th. Um, I asked my mom, can I still continue doing this? She said, it's no problem. She said, okay. She, she asked my pastor. My pastor said, I don't see a problem. You continue, it's okay. But something within me said no. I did not know five Bible verses. But something within me told me you cannot have that experience of being born again and continue selling that. Can I have an amen somebody? What happened? There was a change. Now, the day I gave my life to Jesus, I remember when I was walking home, I sensed a difference in my life. Amen. And the only way I can explain the difference that happened when I gave my life to Jesus is I felt like a candle was lit in my heart. 
I, I had not gone to Bible school. I did not, you know, studied theology or things to, you know, salvation, you know, which, you know, the Greek word for salvation. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I have not studied all those things. Soteria, which is salvation, the Greek word. I did not know all those things. But let me tell you something. The day, that day I gave my life to Jesus when I was walking home, I could sense a difference in me. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So I wonder why we are struggling telling people you cannot sell beer while you are still born again. Amen. Why are we struggling? Did you change? Did, you, did the old guy die or was he just fainted? Because if there was change in you, there's something within you that should just tell you wrong. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember back in school, I had learned a few vocabularies of cussing. Some curse words. But when I gave my life to Jesus, there were words that could not come out of my mouth. Amen. 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 How many know there are things you can't say? Yes. <clears throat> oh, lift up one hand and say, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. <laughs> somebody lives in the inside of me. Amen. Come on, say, somebody lives in the inside of me. And let me tell you, when I gave my life to Jesus, sense his presence. I never knew what the presence of God was. Because when I was a sinner, I did not know. But the day I gave my life to Jesus, I could tell he's right there. How many can sense him right in your heart? Praise the Lord. You don't have to fast for 30 days to hear him. But you can just tell God is inside of me. Praise the name of the Lord. So, I'm talking about transformation. Transformation. Glory to God. Let's read Isaiah 61. The book of Isaiah 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and opening of the prison to them that are bound. Telling somebody, I think I was saying, Pastor George, man, I try to avoid being a pastor. I think it's Matthew I was saying. I try to avoid being a pastor for many years. I knew I would be a pastor, but I was hiding in business. Because I know the troubles that pastors go through, especially when you're full time. So I was like, God, allow me to do my to do my own business. I will support pastors. How many know what I'm talking about? Praise the Lord. But how many know when you have a call of God on your life, even if you go to Tashish, you will find yourself in Nineveh? Somehow. Tell your neighbor somehow. Oh, come on, you're too cold this morning. Tell your neighbor somehow. Somehow. Oh, yeah. I was having fun flying around the world, going to Turkey. We were the first guys who went to Turkey. You know, getting all the suits and the shoes and all the other things. I was enjoying myself, minding my own business, doing my own business. And I was telling God, you know what, I'll support them. <laughs> like a job, the thing I fear most <laughs> is now befalling me. But it's fun. It's fun. Hallelujah. It's fun being a man of God. It's wonderful. Amen. It's a privilege. Amen. 
Actually, it's a privilege to be a man of God. Amen. Wow. Could you celebrate? The Spirit of the Lord is up on me. That is Jesus actually being quoted by Isaiah because he quoted it in Luke chapter 3, chapter 4, 18. Don't go there. But Jesus quoted and he said, this is for me. He said, this scripture has been fulfilled in your eyes. The Spirit of the Lord You know, there's so much meat in that verse. The Spirit of the Lord. Why is it the Spirit of the Lord? Because He's a, he's, he's a spirit of lordship. And wherever he enters, he does not share a throne with somebody else. He has to be Lord. Can I have an amen to somebody? The spirit of the Lord. In other words, the spirit of the books. Woo! The spirit of the books, the, the Lord, you know, the Lord Lord is the, the one who says in, the, in that estate. Can I have an amen to somebody? Amen. So the spirit of angels. Hey. Can you get a little bit excited so that we can have fun on the last Sunday of the, of the, of the year 2017? Tell the neighbor, get a little bit excited. Don't look at me like I'm a Nelly zombie. <laughs> the Spirit of the Lord. My God. And the Bible says, is it in 2 Corinthians? It says, Actually, 318, it says, and 20, it says, where the Spirit of the Lord is. It's liberty. That Spirit, of the Spirit of the Lord cannot be new and you be bound. Amen. 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 Can I have a witness, somebody? Amen. Oh, tonight I'll be smoking, man. <laughs> the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's like Jesus is coming and say, I'm not coming here to negotiate. No discussion. Hey. Amen. It is the spirit of begging is upon me. Can I have an amen to somebody? He said the spirit of the Lord is on me. Woo. And that was his JD job description. Says because he has anointed me. Too many movies. I can watch and you are describing you took a movie. Satan is a thief. He messed in heaven. Angel Michael did he? Did he? Cast him out. The guy came down here with a virus, Trojan, and infected Adam. So, heaven, they realized whatever they had started in this satellite called Earth had been infected by this Trojan called, called, called Satan. How many know what I'm talking about? Now you can see it in pictures because you're used to movies. Your mind needs to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. <laughs> And I have a witness, somebody. <clears throat> so the devil comes here, he messes the earth, the good earth God had created. But Jesus right now, like the starring, how many know what I'm talking about? Comes, comes down on the earth. Talk to me, somebody. He comes down on the earth. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. And he says now, I'm going to the earth to go back after that thing. The Bible says, John 10, 10, the thief comes to kill, steal and destroy, but I am come. Hallelujah. Can I have an amen, somebody? I am come. That was the thief came, but somebody else also came. Amen. Amen. 
That's why one, 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 one Wednesday we were here and our other sister after powerful service, she was telling me, oh, I have been having such a bad day. Pastor, and we came from a very powerful service. I told her, don't talk to me. I don't want to hear. We just come from a move of God and you, 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 that you kept the devil in the service. You sustained your problem. Oh, come on, somebody. You know, people's, some people's problems are so deep. They sustain them. They sustain a problem in the anointing. For a hush. Just come from a move of God. I don't want to hear what, whatever devil you encountered before you came to this service. Because the Bible says the thief came to steal, kill, and kill. But! Jesus came on the earth. And when he came to the scene, he says, The spirit now of the Lord, the spirit of the books, is upon me. I'm here to tell you anything that is troubling you because the spirit of the Lord is in the house. Amen. It's going to Because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor of me, he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, opening of the prison to them that are bound. Look at that. The spirit of the law. Hey. He didn't come to negotiate with the devil. He didn't come for a diplomatic mission to discuss the possibilities of captives going free. You know, sometimes some of these terrorist networks, they know you have held captive. That's not what Jesus came to do. There was no discussion. Amen. And in this message, I was preaching it in India. Oh my goodness. Whew. We went to preach in Westerns, my pastor's friend, church, and preached the same message I'm preaching on Sunday, but Will was telling me, Pastor, I've never seen him preach like that. makes a difference. 
Say with me, the anointing makes the difference. Anointing makes the difference. The anointing is better than skill. Skill is good. But we need to move beyond skill to anointed skill. Can I have an amen, somebody? That's why you see God can use a man who's not even gone to school and have pilots sit under him, scholars sit under him, workings, and, 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 and he gets an ability to do such mighty works. Why? Because the anointing makes the difference. It's the empowerment. It's the divine ability upon somebody. And let me tell you something, when the anointing is upon you, everything you do looks good. People who are really anointed, people copy them. When Bonke came here in 1988, Raymond Bonke, Evangelist Bonke came here in 1988, he would preach and say, hey, hey. And every now, in every crusade you walk around in Kenya, people would preach and say, Oh, 
came for a riot right there, they needed to count the cost. <laughs> That's where God took me to train me. I used to ask God, why do you take me in the midst of devils? <laughs> it was making me a hard nut. But I have a lady on I remember one time those boys, all of them, went on a rampage, stoned a Land Rover full of cops. They had to run away, go for reinforcement. And they say, whoever, I didn't join the strike. They say, whoever, is, whoever did not join the strike, we are going to whip them. They came to tell me, and I told them, whoever will come for me, come for me first. You will get born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you will be a prophesy. They whipped out the boys, they couldn't touch them. They used to say, don't joke with that mono. <laughs> Talk to me, somebody. And I pray for them. They used to say, for one, don't joke with it. This one can pray for you until you die. Hallelujah. You don't need to be a grown up for the anointing to work on you. Can I have an amen, somebody? The anointing can work on you even when you're in high school. The Spirit of the Lord can be with you when you're in college. Wherever you are, be annoyed! Amen. <laughs> Amen. So these guys came, they didn't even have PA system. Kelly, they came with <laughs> Titus Masika, plus Titus Masika, the father of, you know, Masi Masika. That man was a serious evangelist. Wow! He, he would enter into a college and devour the college in Jesus' name. Telling you, ah, he was some, like he had a booster in his chest. That man, with a wife, they turned colleges and schools upside down Amen. under the anointing. Amen. They didn't have PA system. There were no pianos. But I remember our whole school, like 200 boys giving their life to Jesus that week. Wow. And the whole Na na ta ka. <laughs> what made the difference? Can <laughs> Could I have an amen, somebody? <laughs> or look at somebody that tell them depend on the anointing. Yeah. <laughs> now give us verse three to a point and to them the moon in Zion to give them. are extremes. You can either have beauty or ashes. You can't have both. Hallelujah. And this, when we are closing this year in 2018, God is going to clothe you with beauty. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 
and there's a glitter that is on you when the anointing is on you. So it takes to keep beautiful ashes and then oil of joy for mourning. Joy is flows like oil. Glory to God. Amen. And this morning, on this afternoon, I'm going to release that oil in this house. Amen. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Touch on these a bit of this tonight, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Give us verse 4. Let's go ahead. Uh -huh. Let's read. And they shall. And they shall be the old They shall be the Give us verse 3. Give us verse 3. When the gospel came to them, they were mourning in Zion. They had ashes. They were mourning. They had a spirit of heaviness. Heaviness is a spirit. But in the next verse, they have already been transformed and they are already beginning to build. Wow. Amen. Wow. Can I have a witness somebody? Amen. So God meets you in a situation where you are down, where you are disgusted, where you are in pain, where you are wasted. He transforms you and makes sure that the same anointing that flowed through, I mean, to you shall flow through you to reselect others who are in the same situation that you are in. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I was not only delivered, but I've also become a deliverer. Amen. Amen. And that's the purpose of God or the gospel of the anointing your life. You have to extend it. God does not bless you so that you become a wonder. And you start showing people, look at me. No. God blesses you so that you can be a blessing, an agent of the same blessing. Say amen somebody. Amen. So God will not give you money, make you a millionaire, so that you can be busy cleaning, peeping your ride on a Sunday, and showing the people how great thou art. <laughs> the reason why God is going to bless you with wealth is so that you can go back as an ambassador Amen. to people who are like you. And tell them if God did it for me. Yeah. Oh, you need to shout an amen, say somebody. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And I've seen time and time again people who have been set free, people who have been blessed, and they refuse to testify, they refuse to say about the goodness of God in their life. God takes snatch, or it, it, it just drives. I'm telling you. I remember many years ago, I was praying for people at an altar. I think that was 19, the year 204 at an altar. And I prayed for this girl. She fell under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, getting delivered, and you know. And when she came up from down, she told me, I want you to help me, pray with me, because I'm a prostitute. I'm not shocked because I know that the spirit of the Lord is on me. So it doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter. That, 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 that drug, that the blood of Jesus, the, the prescription we have works everywhere. Amen. So I prayed with her. She got born again. 
transformed, started walking with her in the work. And then she said, I don't want people to know I was a prostitute. You know the Bible doesn't hide. But Rahab says Rahab the prostitute. was demon possessed. There are so many fellow women who Jesus changed. But the Bible doesn't hide it. Let me tell you something. She couldn't. She couldn't let anybody know. I don't want my family to know I was a prostitute. I don't want my family to know. Let me tell you something. Of course, if you killed somebody before, you don't have to go telling everybody you killed or go and tell them I killed your father. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> also we need wisdom. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But, look at people who are ashamed of what God has done for them. They are not able to keep their miracle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Within one year, she was back. She was ashamed. of what God had done for her. And that's why sometimes if you come out of there, you need to come out. Like that lady who was HIV and you know, she became the head of the HIV initiative in Kenya. Say, yeah, I'm positive and I'm gonna help others. I came from there. Let me tell you, the moment you stand up boldly and you say it, the first thing is you are shamed the devil because the power of God has worked in your life. Amen. Can I have an amen, amen. somebody? Amen. So don't be ashamed of saying where you've come from. That who didn't come from nowhere? Ask your neighbor who didn't come from nowhere. We all came from somewhere. And we are not, we are not better than you. Some of us were liars. And sometimes who told you that prostitution is worse than lying? Come on, somebody. But don't just be afraid and ashamed of saying where God has taken you from. Sex! The blind guy healed by Jesus. And and the Pharisees come and say, well, 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 how did the miracle happen? The guy says, well, uh, a sorry man came, spit on the floor, touched my, you know, mix it with mud, saliva with mud, touched my eyes, told me go wash, and I got healed. <clears throat> Who is that man? I don't know the man. <clears throat> he didn't know the man. Then they, you know, he later discovered it was Jesus, and the Pharisees tell him that that was a sinner. <laughs> the man who healed you was a sinner. And don't even follow him. The parents of the of the, the, the Pharisees went to the parents and they asked the parents, is this your son? Yes. Was he born bright? Yes. How did he get here? The Bible says they did not want to say because they did not want to get excommunicated from the synagogue. Come on, is anybody in this house with some boldness in this house? Yeah. Come on, shake your neighbor, tell them you need some boldness to justify. <laughs> yeah, and they say they could not say it. But this guy's Pharisees again came to the same man who got here. And I said, sir, how did you get here? He was fed up. He was fed up. See, I'm sick and tired of telling you I'm the guy. I was blind. But he says, I don't know who healed me. I don't care what he used. All I know is that I was once blind. Oh, come on, 
in the grace of God. So we cannot come here and try and act cute. Like we are just a perfect couple. And we are happily ever after. The devil is alive. Can I have a name on somebody? I will show you my wounds. I will show you my wounds. I will tell you what I have been through. Because what I not for God, I will not be married today. What I not for God, we will not have a family today. Do not be ashamed.
sit right there. Because yeah. somebody tell them, stop acting cute. Stop acting cute. Stop acting cute. Stop acting cute. Stop acting Stop acting cute. Speak of God. It's not that you were trained in manners. No, we know you. You're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Raising a good family. It's the grace of God. Yeah. Your neighbors now, your, your colleagues are hookers on Konyange or somewhere else. They are Pango or Kano. It's been the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Hey, I feel like praising God by the end of this year. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say me and my big mouth. Yeah. Me and my big mouth. God bless me with a very nice car, German car. And I was entering Garden City. And this young man stopped me, stopped me, like, hey, man, man, hold it, hold it, hold it. They are telling me, can you rave it? We want to hear the hmm. You know? And I stopped, I raved it for them. Can we take some selfies? We took some selfies. I looked at them, I said, man, you know what? I'm not a pimp, I'm a preacher. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't do drugs. This is a Jesus right. Yeah. Hey. This is a Jesus right. He did it! Yeah. I remember when I was riding a motorcycle to go and preach the gospel. No! <laughs> Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. <laughs> Until I was born. 
you know, I'm like, man, this is too much. Even the waiters were like, hey. But when I look at it, you know what? It's the doing of the Lord. Amen. I, I was still the Shama boy. Maybe I'm the Shats Mondo. <laughs> God can take a shots mono and make him walk to Serena and everybody say, Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. I prophesy to you. Amen. I say that. Hey. I prophesy to you Amen. that you are going to be a billboard for God. Amen. Can I have an amen, sir? People will be looking at you. Your face is a billboard. You're a display. Come on, lift up one hand and say, I am a display. I am a display of what God can do. Of what, what God, God can do. Yeah. Some of these singers, God blesses their one song. Just blesses one song. They forget church. They are so busy traveling all over. Before they come to church, they say, God, give me a thousand dollars. Remember, brother, you used to ask for an opportunity to sing on stage. <laughs> remember. Remember. Hallelujah. Let me ask you, can you do it for free? Can you do it for free? Because this God, this kind of God too. Are you hearing? This kind of God too. That brought you all that way, lifted you, picked you out out of so many boys in Sunday school, and gave you a privilege that you can be a worshiper. Yeah. Now you have five secretaries. Yes. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I want to spend my life being a blessing. Amen. Amen. Can I have an amen, somebody? I don't care whether I pack a whatever down there. It's not in me. Amen. It's not in me. It doesn't own me. Praise God. Amen. Money doesn't have me. I will have money, but money will never have me. Amen. Can I have a witness, somebody? Amen. Just remain a servant. The Bible says, freely you've received. Freely give. And the more you give, you give the more you receive. Can I have an amen? Let me finish. Let me finish. I talked about the transformation. The second point was ministration, the spirit of upon. Number three is fruitfulness. Isn't this rich food? Are you feeling? Thank God you are not in holiday or in Ushago, like many people, but you're in the house today. Now, the other level we need to go to is the inner work, the fruitfulness level. There's a difference between a Christmas tree and a mango tree or an apple tree. <laughs> now, if you, if you, January, February, mangoes fall at the, at the foot of a tree. Is that not so? Now, if you see a mango and a tree, or mangoes and a tree, that tree is not uh, an avocado. It's a what? <laughs> How many know that fruits don't fall away from far away from the tree? Yani How many know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Say with me, fruits don't fall away far away from the tree. <laughs> Christmas tree may have gifts under it of boxes or some things under it like they did in our house the other day. But those things do not come from the tree. And that's why you need to be careful because there's a difference between gift and fruit. A Christmas tree has gifts. Christmas gift, like this one. Yeah, you see that. Thank you. Christmas tree has gifts, but there is no relationship. This did not come from here and fell in the morning. <laughs> and I have a witness, somebody. But fruit comes from the tree. Oh, you come. 
And when I talk about fruit, I'm talking about the inner workings of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. That's why a gift may open a door for you, but character keeps the door open. Amen. Let me read this verse. I was reading to my wife last night. I think it was on Saturday. I let it close. First Peter 3 4. It's so powerful. This, this verse hit me like a bomb. First Peter 3 4. <clears throat> By the way, I love spending my last days of the year just studying the word the whole day. By the way, don't go crazy that you hear there's a prophet from Rwanda, a prophet from Sijui where, come on, come on, come on, come on. Who has a Bible here? This is the best prophecy Amen. for 2018. Amen. Stop looking for what? Can I have an amen somebody? Amen. Stop chasing what? At you, prophet, I will prophesy here. It must come to pass. Mm -hmm. Who told you that? I'm not looking for a prophet. I have a prophecy. His promises are here, amen. Mm -hmm. And the best thing we can do with you right here is to put you in the word. Mm -hmm. Because after January 28, you will forget a prophet. Wow. <laughs> but you will need the word. All right, let's begin from verse, let's try three, verse three, two. Okay, let's try one. Mm. All right, let's go, likewise. Likewise. One to go, like, let's read. Likewise. likewise. <laughs> you are in subjection to your own husbands. But just hold on there. Just hold on there. And it means a wife who is bearing fruit and has a husband who is not a believer, and that's not a ticket for marrying an unbeliever. I'm saying if you're married now, now. Tell your, tell your neighbor, pastor's talking about now, no, not future. No, no, no. Don't, look, don't, look, don't look for a guy who's not born again simply because he has mullah and say, pastor, quote this verse. Say amen. So it says a wife who is believing, but through her character, through her conversation, walk of life, Likewise, he wives, be in subjection to your own husband, that if anyone not obey the word, that they may, without the word, hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. If they do not obey the word, the wives, you will be the word. Because they don't have a Bible, they don't read Bible, they don't listen to John Hedy. Talk to me right now. Come on, come on, catch you quickly. Hallelujah. They don't, they, they don't watch TV checks. They may be out drinking and coming home. The only Bible they have is you. Right. And so the Bible says that they may, without a word, be, be warned. Give us amplified there, quickly. Give us amplified. May be warned by the conversation. Now, that they may be warned by, not by the discussion, but the godly lives of their women. There's a lady who came for Wisdom Keys meeting. She heard me on radio. Her husband is a very senior doctor. She came for a couple of meetings. And after some time, the husband came. She, actually, the husband came. And he said, Pastor, I came to see what you've been giving my wife. Because this woman never used to talk to me. Quite an Ilenga for weeks. But right now she treats me like a king. See, I came to investigate. A senior doctor in this city of Vic. The man gave his life to Jesus. Today he is a preacher and a doctor. Sister, stop casting out that devil out of your of your husband. 
and saying, Thou devil, I rebuke you. No, 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 that's not the way. Can I have an amen? <laughs> Bear fruit. Can I have an amen, somebody? Bear fruit. Let them see your kindness. Let them see that you, you no longer get angry like you used to get angry. Amen. Let them see your tolerance. And before long, they will follow you to that church. She was telling me a story about how this man, was it John Austin or which preacher? Miles Monroe had a man in his, a woman in his church, and I think the, the husband refused to. I think what was the story? I think the husband was jealous. Let's look at the text. <laughs> 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 this one 
this could be meant for women right now. Can I have an amen somebody? But of course, the message is for both. The world looks at appealing. But let's read verse 4. Verse 4. It says, but let it be the inward ad adorning. Let it be the inward adorning. So you can have makeup, you can have all that jewelry and all the glamour and whatever. You walk like a peacock and do all the other things. But my friend, you can be all that. But before God, you're nothing. It says, let it be the inward adorning and the beauty of the hidden person of the heart. With the incorruptible and fading charm of a gentle and a peaceful spirit. The Bible calls it a meek and a quiet spirit. And then it says, which is not anxious or wrought up, but it's very precious. Bible says it's very precious. That's why Jesus comes in the book of Revelation chapter 3 and tells the church here, you have a reputation that you are rich, that you are clothed. He comes and tells them, you are naked. Can I have a witness? Say amen to somebody. Amen. Your new preoccupation when you come into the kingdom of God is not subtle. Yeah. Talk to me, somebody. And there's nothing wrong with that. Most of us, everybody wants to be a slave queen. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to remind you, even your grandma was a slave queen. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, grandma was a slave queen too. Yeah, grandma was a slave. grandmother was a slave queen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was a head turner. Can I have an amen, somebody? But right now, nobody can look at her twice because the glory has departed. It's coming. As we close this year and enter into a new year, I will, I will not even finish, but I will revisit this. This is too important. Can I have a witness, somebody? Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. If you used to hook in the world and be a hooker, when you come now and get born again into the kingdom, just realize there are no customers of that kind in God's sanctuary. So your dress code is supposed to depict women like daughters of Sarah. Can I have a name in somebody? Can I have a name in somebody? Yeah. You did not come to God's house to be a slave queen. Well, who are you slaying? We all slay one name and they call the devil. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can I have a witness somebody? And all people shout it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So when you wear, wear something decent. Amen. Yeah. We came to see Jesus, not your cups. And some of these things, you need to hide them. <laughs> because they are only for one person. Amen. Amen. Only one person has permission to see those things. Amen. Hallelujah. But when we don't have a church, my victims in the top class there. I'm in the top class there. Top class there. Can I have an email? Somebody. I don't see it, man. Talk to me, somebody. Can I preach it? Yeah. Or can I preach it? Yeah, we need to address this. And we need decency in God's house. We need decency in the sanctuary. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So that when we go out there to, uh, you know, the people. I don't know who I'm talking to. There should be a difference. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because somebody who is going to get one of 
First Peter one twenty four. For all fresh, Jesus Christ. First Peter one twenty four. Let's read it. Let's read it loud.
Range Rover ni fresh in Range Rover. Fresh in Audi. Fresh in Chrysler and Bugatti. Christ. And the glory of men Deleting files, deleting files 
that are not necessary from your from, from, from your from your hardware that are clogging that are clogging you there are files that are that are slowing you down in your work with God come on some of us we need to restore factory settings come on lift up your voices right now Shandelebo Makotelebahate Shakarababakaye God I want to be a minister I don't want to be a show off Harabakatelebo Pastor Shadrach just read for us here that God refused the sacrifice of Cain. Yeah. God can refuse some sacrifices. God can refuse some songs. God can refuse. Yeah. He doesn't take everything that is offered at the altar. He can refuse some offerings. Why? They are not given with an intention of honoring him.
come on, let's take a minute. Let's repent. Let's take a minute and pen right now. Share about Kando Rubo Safne Rebo Shata Papa Baba Hanga. Kosheke Terebo Kazerebo Saya. It's possible. Everybody do it for yourself right now. Oh God, adore me. Adore me. Adore me with love. Adore me with strength and control. Adore me with the beauty of Jesus. Let's take two minutes and just do this business right now. Rabakata, Rabahando, Rolo, Sheke, Rabahai. Oh God, I repent of the seeds of 2017. I repent, oh God, of my limitations, shortcomings of 2017. Anything that might hinder me to be acceptable, righteousness. Anything that may hinder me, that may make me to come short of righteousness, oh God. In 2017, oh God, I repent. People are treated badly. People are ignored. People are being loved. Somebody I was very blessed, I did not bless. Forgive me, God. Oh, Ramaka, Sherebosa, Katerere Bokaya. Come on, this is personal. Just take your moment. If you want to kneel next to your chair, just do it. Ramaka, Sherebokaya. For forgiveness, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
tell you this service, so much as what is happening right now, and some of us need your your your, your, your heart is formatted. Formatted. For, formatted. Old files deleted and new files put in.
big step right God only uses vessels that have gone through the fire. Why? Because he wants to remove the impurities. Your gift is being purified. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God.
anointing. Even those who are watching on Facebook Live, I'm telling you this tangible anointing. May you be set free right now wherever you are. I don't care whether it's an addiction. I don't care whether it's last pornography, whatever it is. May you be set free under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We delete those fires from hell. We delete those viruses from hell. You are not going to cross to a new year with fires from hell. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I need you, Lord. Shekha, Rosa, Padosa, Kai. 